how to give negative feedback, how to let someone know that we don't like what they did. Of course, you can use the good old-fashioned feedback sandwich. Positive first, negative, and then you end with a positive comment. I don't like it. I don't think it's honest. I don't think it's uh, effective. That's a whole different video, but I suggest something else. I think a good negative feedback is direct and empathetic. Three critical steps. Step number one, signaling good intention. We have to let the other person know that our intentions are good towards them. You might ask, so what, what is this? Why, why do we need to, to do this? Evolution wired us to check for intention. And if we detect that the intention of the other person is bad, we're gonna get defensive. We're not gonna listen to the criticism. So it's very important to signal good intention. How can you do that? In a relationship, over a period of time, you can do that by giving feedback more than just once a year, more than just your yearly evaluation, appraisal, giving feedback regularly and not just negative feedback, but positive feedback also. There is a study in which the ratio of positive to negative feedback is five to one, meaning that if you give a negative criticism, negative feedback, then you need five positive ones in order to keep the relationship in a good state. But how can you signal good intention within one conversation? You have to demonstrate to, to your partner that you understand their world. You, you see them, you understand their problems. So, for example, if you're a manager giving feedback to an employee, you might say something like this to begin. I know that you had a lot of work lately. I also know that you like to, to work alone and it's hard for you to, to ask for help from others. So with this sentence, with this starting sentence, you make it clear to them, you demonstrate to them that your intentions are good. You understand their world. Again, if this critical phase is not done properly, the person is going to do this. Basically cross their arms, get defensive, and practically you're, you're talking to the wall. They are not going to listen to your, to your negative feedback, okay? Step number two, describe the concrete behavior. No judgment, no labeling, no evaluation, just describe what happened. So just to continue the feedback I, I started, the manager could say something like this. In the past month, you had two deadlines and you missed both of them. You missed the first deadline by two days and you missed the second deadline by three days. Very objective, no evaluation. And since there is no evaluation, there is, there is no reason for the other person to, to get defensive, okay? So they are going to listen to, to what you have to say. Critical step number three, you have to explain the impact of this behavior. For example, you know, we talked about it earlier that we are so interconnected at this company that if one person is late, then the others can be late and actually the whole project can be delayed. So you explain why it's a problem for you, why it's a problem for the organization. Now, there are two more steps which I'm not going to go into details now. Very briefly, step number four, you have to find out the root causes. Find out why this behavior is happening and at that stage you have to listen. You have to give space to the employee, to your partner, to actually find out what's happening. And step number five, you have to plan the way forward together, agree on the solution together, or what you can do is you can ask for a specific action. Mm -hmm.